Welcome to another episode of Guy's Home Kitchen. Tonight, we're making spaghetti carbonara. All right, it's one of my favorite dishes. I had it twice when I was in Italy, once in Florence, once in Rome at a, uh, at basically this, this lady's and man's house that they cooked for us. Uh, it was a great experience. And tonight, I'm cooking it for you. It's the authentic recipe that was made thousands of years ago and it's going to be tasty and it's going to be creamy and we're not using cream because the real recipe does not call for cream. You're going to find cream in restaurants, but that's because they need to hold it before they actually bring it to your table because this is one of those cook and serve type of dishes right away. So enough talking, let's get saucy. All right, so here we go. It's time to get cooking. Here are our ingredients. We have guanciale. And guanciale is the pig cheek, okay? But it's very similar to bacon, just like the pork belly uh, that is found in pancetta. So if you can't find guanciale, which is actually kind of hard to find in the United States, uh, you have to go to Italian specialty market. If you don't have one of those, then you're probably out of luck. If you do and you can find it, it's great. If not, pancetta is an awesome replacement. So that's going to be kind of the star of the show in addition to the natural cream we build. And we have eggs. We're going to be using egg yolks only tonight. So uh, each serving of the recipe, which is about four ounces of pasta, calls for about one and a half egg yolks. And I am making four servings tonight, so I'm going to be using six egg yolks. We have pepper. We have pecorino romano which is a very salty cheese, so we're not going to use a lot of it. It's just very little. If we were using Parmigiano-Reggiano like last week, we would be using a lot more. But this is extremely salty, so I'm going to be using a little bit. And then we have spaghetti. So spaghetti, I actually have two here because I found this one today and I wanted to show you guys. Spaghetti um, is the, the, the main pasta for spaghetti carbonara. Um, but this one, the Colezione, uh, is an artisan collection from Barilla and basically I want to show you this let me move this there's some key difference here so regular spaghetti you can find anywhere and then the the artisan collection you'll notice two things right away one you can definitely probably see this in the camera is there the artisan one is lighter in color and the, also the texture, which you're not going to be able to see, is, uh, is much more, is rougher. So the roughness is going to actually help uh, release more starch to the water, because that's, that's actually part of the element of the sauce, is the starch that's in the water is going to be used along with the egg yolks to create the sauce, the carbonara sauce. And that is what's going to make it really thick in the end, which, which you're going to see. Okay, tonight I'm using this one. Uh, if all you have is this one, which is probably what most people, totally fine. Uh, actually, I was planning on using this tonight until I found this other one. Uh, so, first thing we're going to do, make some room here. And we're going to trim the guanciale, because what we want to do, similar to last week, is render out this fat because uh, we want that pasta to absorb the fat into the guanciale. Plus, we want the meat of the guanciale to uh, be very, uh, not very crispy, but meaty and crispier uh, than you would like a really crisp bacon. So, to start, I'm just going to trim the outside of this guanciale a little bit, just to get rid of the, some of the funk that's on here. Okay. You don't have to go crazy, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but getting some of this off definitely helps uh, with that flavor. Uh, again, if you're using pancetta, totally cool. A lot of restaurants in Italy actually use pancetta as well. Uh, the, I'm just using guanciale tonight because this is the authentic way of cooking carbonara. Okay. So to, to cut, you have choices. You could do cubes, you could do slices. I like to do like kind of like long uh, slithers, if you will. So I'm gonna cut it about yay thick. It looks like about quarter to half an inch. 
Okay, I hope you can see that. This is eight ounces of guanciale, uh, making four servings, and you're gonna want two ounces per serving. So to cut it, now I'm gonna cut this way and make little pieces like that, okay? So let me get cut in here. Hope everyone's having a good time and enjoyed the show last week. We made an amazing Emilia's risotto. Next week we have penne a la vaca. So I hope you could tune into that. If you have an RSVP for that, go ahead and do that. Also, if you don't mind, I would love to expose as many people to this recipe as possible. So if you don't mind sharing this video to your timeline and letting your friends know what you're up to and to join in, I'd really appreciate that. Okay, so here we go. Also to note, if you are cooking along with me right now, and if you haven't already, go ahead and get that boiled, uh, the pasta water boiling. Uh, we're gonna want that ready to go. Once we're done prepping here, and we're done rendering out the fat, this, this recipe is gonna come together super fast, like really fast. So just make sure you got everything ready. Okay, now that we got our guanciale, we're going to take this over to the pan. I have, again, a cold pan, because like last week you learned, you want, when you want to render out fat, you want to start cold. I'm going to put on a medium heat, which is, oh, I was on right. So we're going to do medium, it's about right there. Okay, so we're going to let this render down. Give this a couple minutes, and by that time, we're going to drop the spaghetti in, okay? If you guys have any questions along the way, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer any. Okay, so, so carbonara actually goes back... Um, many, many years, it's kind of a, a peasant dish because the ingredients are, were super available and like this is just cured meat, like, you know, like uh, pancetta or bacon, except bacon smoked. And um, so all you needed was spaghetti, guanciale, egg yolk, and pecorino romano, which cheese was kind of a currency back then. So that was widely available. And they're also very proud of their local cheese. So if you were to travel to Tuscany and get a carbonara, chances are you're gonna have it with uh, Parmigiano Reggiano in it, which is totally fine, it tastes great. And then in, when you're in Rome, if you have an authentic one, you're going to have it basically exactly the same way we're having it tonight. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just slowly rendering out this fat and you can see it already coming out because we want the fat rendered and we're gonna actually, once the fat is rendered, we're gonna reserve a few of these pieces for the garnish and the rest will be mixed in with the pasta. And you know, you don't want a hard fatty piece. So it's two things, get the fat into the pasta for flavor, plus get the meat meaty and not gnarly a little bit. Okay, while we let that go, I'm gonna start with the eggs. I'm just lowering this actually because I think it was on too high. So you can see I lowered it. I don't want it to really burner get crispy too fast. I want the fat to come out. I'm also going to turn the fan on. If uh, if you guys have trouble hearing me uh, after I turn this fan on, just let me know in the comments and I will turn it off. Okay, so for the eggs, here's what we're going to do. Six eggs. 
Now remember, we only need a yolk, so don't crack the yolk. I need to take out more eggs, so hopefully I don't crack any yolks. And I'm putting all the egg into one bowl because I want to show you a little trick of the trade to make separating eggs super easy. Okay, so that's five. All right, six and no shells. There we go. Wipe the hands. So here's how you separate the eggs. You take your hand, which is pretty much the best, best tool in the kitchen. Um, and you just scoop out the yolk. You don't want anything other than the yolk, okay? So one. Two. This one's stubborn. So what I'm doing is I'm just pinching underneath that white off. So three. If you get a little bit of white in there, don't worry about it. There, you're gonna find some recipes call for whole eggs, some call for egg yolks only. The argument is amongst the chefs that the whole egg is the more authentic one because they didn't, they didn't waste any food back then. So they would use the whole egg. Um, However, I'm using egg yolks only because it's going to make it thicker and creamier. Also, we don't want the egg yolks to cook and to get scrambled too fast. So egg yolks will egg yolks cook later in the process than uh, egg whites. I'm checking on. Okay, this is starting to look good. You can see a lot of the fat already. Look at that. Look at all that. That's that's like good. That's the goodness right there. Okay. Actually, if you push this down here, it renders faster. Okay. It's getting actually smoky, so go again. Again, if the fan's too loud, let me know. This is going to be ready soon. Okay. <clears throat> That's almost ready, so we're going to drop the spaghetti now. So I'm taking a whole pound, which is four servings, of my artisan spaghetti here. Okay. Now again, that's really salty. Guanciale is really salty. The pecorino romano is really salty. So I got a pot of boiling water about half full. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm gonna just take a pinch, literally, of salt, just like that. You don't want too much, just enough so you taste the pasta, but not enough so that you. Um, I'll lower that again. So that you. Uh, you know, over, over salt it, okay? That was actually the first, first time I made this recipe. It was actually disgusting because it was way too much salt. I think I used too much pecorino and I used too much salt in the water and it was basically unedible. So here's a trick when you cook pasta. Twist it and drop. And you got it all spread out and you don't have to worry about it sticking too much, okay? So I'm gonna turn up the heat, get that boiling again. Also, Read the package or whatever package you're using. Read the package, it will tell you what, at what time is al dente. What you wanna do is to cook it one minute less than al dente because it's gonna cook again in here to bring it to al dente, okay? So my package set 10 minutes, so I'm gonna set a, uh, a clock for nine minutes. Alexa, set timer for nine minutes. Okay, when that goes off, the pasta gets dropped. into here okay. but so here we go it's fast now so we need to add cheese you're going to want to use somewhere between about an ounce per serving so four ounces would be that that's, that's what i'm going to use i'm not measuring i'm just going by eye if you want to measure you can go ahead just scale it if not this works fine Again, this is a really salty cheese, so if you use too much, it will be too salty in the end. If you can't find Pecorino Romano, go ahead and use Parmigiano Reggiano. That will 
be just fine. You just would need probably to double or triple the amount of cheese. Okay, now we can take black pepper. Get a whole bunch of black pepper in here. Black pepper is actually one of the key ingredients in this dish, which kind of brings this little bit of spice from the pepper brings it all together. Okay. Take our fork and we mix this in. Okay, just like that. This is going to be the base for our sauce. Okay, so let's check in on the guanciale. Got a nice rendering action happening. Over this. Man, I keep going for the light. Make sure that's all in there good. Okay, that's getting nice and saucy in there. Let's get this going. This is a good color, so Okay, maybe you can zoom in on here. You'll see there's this color, which is what we're going for, but then there's pieces like this get next to it. It's not quite ready. You see how that's still fatty? It hasn't really browned yet, and, and that meat is still pink. So it's almost there. Just need a little bit more heat in probably another minute or two. Hopefully we're timing all this correct, and as soon as that timer goes off, we'll take the pasta out and reserve some of these pieces for garnish. We're going straight from the water to here. Um, so no draining, no washing, no oil in there, just a tiny bit of salt in the water. And the reason I filled it up about halfway is because I want to concentrate the starch that's going to be coming off of the spaghetti. Uh, because it's a com again, it's a combination of the starch and the egg yolks and the cheese that's going to make it really creamy, so you don't need to add heavy cream. Let me know what you guys think so far. This is looking good or what? It's certainly smelling good. Okay, it's nearly done. You see it's smoking more now because I turned the heat up. So where's everybody watching from tonight? Let me know. What city are you watching from? Also, I'd like to know, has anybody ever had carbonara? And if so, was it the thin, creamy one with you know the, the heavy cream version that looks a little bit wider? What we're making tonight. I, I stopped our I, I stopped ordering carbonara at restaurants because it's it's just it's it's not good, especially once you had the real thing. It's just there's no contest. So unless if you're gonna do it right, just don't do it at all. Eggs. This on standby. So as soon as this is ready, as soon as that alarm goes off after nine minutes from me, pasta going. I'm going to reserve some of the guanciale. Pasta is going straight in all of it. If this is a 12-inch pan, this is a pound of pasta. It's going to be pretty full in here. Uh, so if you are doing a full pound, hopefully you're using at least a 12-inch. If you're doing one or two servings, 10 inches is fine. Okay, so I'm going to reserve some of these because that is the color I'm going for here. Oh my god, I wish you guys could smell this. Look at all that fat that rendered out. All that is going right into the 
pasta to make it taste really good. See this? No sticking. No sticking. Perfect. Also, if you are cooking, get a ladle ready because we are going to add pasta water to this, as I mentioned earlier. So be ready for that. And as a note, in case I forget, because we're going to have to do this fast, you got to let this cool down a little bit before you add the eggs, otherwise you're going to get scrambled eggs. Okay? <clears throat> Any questions so far? Anything? Okay. What are some of the comments? Kelly's using bacon. That's that's okay, Kelly. Use what you got. Thank you for the wide shot comments. We uh, actually added a fourth camera tonight. Uh, we have the wide shot here, and we also have the wide shot over by the cutting board. So hopefully, it's a combination of cooking and and me. Thank you. Bob's turning into my number one fan. Hi, Alan. How are you? Alan also does a uh, Friday night living room jazz. So, Alan, if you want to post a link, go ahead uh, to make it easy for people. But if you ever need something to do on a Friday night and looking to add some music to that alcohol, go ahead and tune in Friday night at 8 o'clock. That's a good idea, Judith. How much do you think I should charge? Tell me how much I should charge. I, I want to charge a lot, but what is a fair price? All right. All right. So Kelly, Kelly's, Kelly's cooking live. Kelly, if you're cooking live and you're ahead of me, let me know where you're at so I can let you know what to do. That's a good idea. Priceless. All right. So I guess I take it to auction then. <laughs> I do want to. I do want to start having guests um, once it's safe to do so. So I don't know when that's going to be, but it is part of my vision. Oh, there we go. It is part of my vision to um, to have people here. I think it would make a lot more fun and engaging event. Plus, I do want pe other people to taste this because it's really good. <laughs> and. Uh, it shouldn't be just me all the time. Anyway, so a minute under al dente, we're going straight in, okay? It's gonna be bubbly because you're adding water to oil. So just get it in there. You know, I've received a lot of feedback um, in the last week, and that feedback is actually what makes, I'm gonna turn off that water. So I just turned off that water uh, guy, can you do the close up? I want people to see. That's like it's really, really cloudy. Like that's how much starch is in there. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is just toss this. Okay. We want to get that oil absorbed all throughout the pasta. Don, thanks for letting me know what's going on in the comments. Sometimes you never know if you're talking to nobody. Okay. So now that. It is pretty much absorbed, about where we want it. Okay, right there. Heat off. I don't need that anymore so you guys can hear me. Heat off, and you're going to put a little bit of pasta water in here. I'm probably going with like a half a cup, which is a full ladle, basically. Uh, actually, I'm going to do more. And that is going to do two things. It's going to, just a little bit more. I'm making a lot of pasta. That's why it's taking a lot of water. Okay. So, this does two things. One, it starts cooling this down. And this water is also going to finish cooking it. 
And we're just gonna give it another 20 seconds or so. And then we're gonna watch the magic happen. And this is how fast this is going to come together. Okay, my finger doesn't get burnt. I'm good to go. So I'm gonna add the egg on top. I gotta tell you this in advance, because it's gonna be fast. I'm gonna add the egg on top. I'm gonna keep mixing and mixing. If it's too dry, add a little bit more water. If it's too wet, just keep going and keep going until it's really, really creamy, okay? This part always makes me nervous. I'm gonna add eggs to hot things. Just trying to get all in there. Being stubborn. Okay. Now we move. And we just keep moving. And before you know it, it's going to be a creamy carbonara. Just watch. It just happens in a second. In a second, it will happen. Oh. Look at that, it's starting, it's starting. Oh yeah. Wow, look at this. Look at that, just like that. See, this is where the cream is. Not out of a bottle from a cow. This is how you make creamy carbonara, okay? Don't ever, don't ever try that other crap. It really makes me pissed every time. Restaurant adds cream to it, it's stupid. Okay, this is getting really thick now. You see that? Look at that. Oh my God. That's how you do carbonara. Got a little bit of liquid left there, so I'm just gonna keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep mixing. Ho oh, oh, ho. Oh. Ho ho. Look at that. Come on. Come on. <laughs> that is a work of art, is what that is. Okay. This is done, okay? Now it's time to plate. So I'm going to take my tweezers, my ladle, and my garnishment. I'm going to come over here. Make some room. So you guys can see. Keep stirring. Oh yeah. Okay. So if you want to get fancy, if you're, if you're just doing this at home, just divide this between four and a bowl and have at it. But I want to show you some cool presentation techniques. So I got tweezers, which is kind of like the newest fad in restaurants, okay? You grab some pasta and you turn, okay? You turn, you turn, you turn. Let me get them all. Okay. And then you just ladle it right on, just like that. Just like that. Ho oh, ho. Look at that. And then, you want to take a couple of pieces, just like that. Just like that. And then, come back for some cheese. Just like this. Make this thing saucy. Go ahead. And then finally, some pepper. Voila. Spaghetti carbonara. Authentic. No cream. Tastes so good. Tastes so good, Vito? You want to taste? Yeah. All right, come over here to my right. Go for it. Looks really good. Does look really good. <laughs> Bite it off. Give yourself some chance here. <laughs> Go ahead, chew it. Chew. I know you don't like spaghetti. He doesn't like spaghetti. He doesn't like the strings, but he's eating it, right? How is it? Good. On a scale of one to ten, how is it? Um, nine and a half. Nine and a half. Because nothing's ever perfect. <laughs> All right, nine and a half from Vito. That's a high remark, and that's saucy, baby. All right? 
Till next time, hey, check us out. Next week we're doing penne alla vodka. You're not gonna wanna miss that. It's an amazing recipe. Please share, like, and comment on this post. This has been an amazing time. Uh, I'll post the recipe again on the thing. Until next week, stay saucy.